not only the five types of reactions. There are many different types of chemical reactions that keep taking place in and around our life in so many ways. Some of the reactions like endothermic reaction, exothermic reaction, redox reactions, they play a very key role in our day to day life. And that is why we will dedicate this video to some of these very important types of reactions. So let's get started. Now, even before we talk about them, just understand the meaning of these words. Endo means inside. Exo means outside. Thermic, thermo means heat. Now, when heat is given out, that is exothermic reactions. When heat is taken in or heat energy is absorbed, that is endothermic reaction. Pretty simple. Endo is in, heat taken in, that is endothermic. Exo is out, heat given out, that is exothermic. So these are the two types of reactions. Now, if we have to talk about examples, let us talk about, uh, say, combustion reactions. So combustion reactions are all exothermic in nature. So they are all exothermic reaction because as a part of combustion reaction, a lot of heat energy is released. Heat is given out. So they are exothermic. Besides that, if you talk about this reaction where calcium oxide combines with carbon dioxide to form calcium carbonate plus heat energy. So that is again exothermic because heat is released as part of this reaction. Now, what about endothermic reactions? Let's take this example. When magnesium combines with oxygen, it forms magnesium oxide. But for this reaction to take place, we need to provide heat. So if you remember, we actually heat the magnesium ribbon. So heat is an input in this case. So therefore, this is an example of endothermic reaction because we are giving heat as an input for this reaction to take place. So that's endothermic. Let's talk about the process of respiration. So respiration is an example of exothermic reaction. Can you say why? Now before that, what is respiration? Is respiration all about breathing? No, not really. So breathing is just external respiration. Breathing is only exchange of gases. But when we talk about respiration as a whole, it is external respiration that is breathing plus internal respiration. And what is internal respiration? Oxidation of food. So what happens is the food that we eat that gives us energy. But how? By internal respiration. The food that we eat gets oxidized to release a lot of energy and also heat and this is what happens as part of internal respiration so that is why respiration is an exothermic reaction and from where do we get this oxygen it comes from breathing so that's where we talk about external respiration right so respiration as a whole is an exothermic reaction because energy is released as a part of this reaction the next reaction that we want to discuss is a redox reaction, redox, reduction, oxidation. So what is reduction and what is oxidation? So oxidation, as the name suggests, oxidation, that means oxygen is getting added, that is gain of oxygen. Reduction, that means loss of oxygen. Very simple to remember. Oxidation is gain of oxygen. Reduction is loss of oxygen. Now, if you have to uh, explain it in terms of hydrogen, so gain of oxygen actually means loss of hydrogen. So you can say oxidation is loss of hydrogen and reduction is gain of hydrogen. So just to keep it simple, just remember it in terms of oxygen. Oxidation, gaining oxygen, reduction, reducing or losing oxygen. Simple. Now let's take example. Let us suppose copper plus oxygen gives CuO that is copper oxide. So what's happening here? Oxidation or reduction? So in this case, we see that copper is changing from copper to copper oxide. So copper is gaining oxygen. So we can say that copper is oxidized in this case. Let's take another example. Copper oxide plus hydrogen gives copper plus H2O. So what's happening here? Copper oxide is changing to copper. That means copper is losing oxygen. So we can say that copper in this case is reduced. However, in this case, we see that hydrogen is changing from hydrogen to water. So hydrogen is actually gaining oxygen. So we can say that hydrogen in this case is oxidized. 
So if you actually look at this reaction, we see that one element is getting reduced, the other element is getting oxidized. So that means oxidation and reduction are taking place simultaneously. This type of reactions are called redox reaction. That is why they are called redox. That is reduction oxidation taking place side by side. So that's redox reaction. Now let us look at some examples of redox reaction from day to day life. One such example is corrosion. The best thing that you can think of is rusting of iron. So what happens in rusting? A reddish brown layer appears on the surface of iron articles, right? And from where do you get that layer? So that layer is nothing but oxide of iron. Now when these iron articles are exposed to air or moisture, they get oxidized just in this way. So iron combines with oxygen to form iron oxide and this Fe2O3 is nothing but rust. So this oxide of iron is reddish brown in color and this is what we see as rust over iron articles. So rusting is a result of redox reaction taking place. Now, can you answer this? Why do we apply paint on iron articles? To prevent rusting. Because the moment we apply paint on iron articles, we are in a way trying to break the contact of iron with the oxygen in the surroundings. And that's how we are trying to prevent rusting. So that's the reason we generally paint iron articles. Another interesting example of redox reaction in our day-to-day -day life is rancidification. Difficult name. I'll make it easy for you. The word rancid means something with unpleasant smell or unpleasant taste. Uh, let's talk about something which we use in our day-to-day -day life. I'm pretty sure that you often go to shop to buy a packet of chips or any kind of snack item and your parents always advise you to buy the airtight packet somewhat like this inflated like a balloon. Right? Why? That's because when the packet is airtight, the material inside it is prevented from oxidation. So it doesn't react with oxygen and doesn't get rancidified and it stays fresh. In a similar way, you would have seen that when your mom or your grandmom prepares pickles, they put a lot of oil inside it. Why? so that the pickle don't spoil and can be preserved for a longer period of time. How? Because putting so much of oil again prevents the contact of air with the items present inside and hence prevent oxidation and hence prevents rancidification. So in this way we see that in a lot of things around us like in most of the materials that we store in our kitchen we prefer to use airtight containers just to prevent rancidification. Give it a quick thought. Sometimes when you end up buying a packet of chips which is not airtight as in it is not at all fluffy. What happens? When you open the packet you see that you get a bad smell of oil in the chips. Right? Why is that? That's because of rancidification. So this was one excellent example of redox reaction in our day to day life and I'm sure that you would have noticed and if you haven't Try to notice it from next time that most of the food materials that we want to preserve for a longer period of time, especially in our kitchen, we store them in airtight containers. With this, we reach towards the end of this lesson on chemical reactions and equation. And I hope that you liked this learning playlist on this entire lesson. Do share your feedback in the comment section. We will be eagerly waiting for your feedback. See you all very soon with a new topic, with a new video. Till then, bye-bye.